friends stiff knee following surgery is a very common condition here we are going to present a case of a stiff knee following a hofa fracture fixation hofa's fracture is a coronal plane fracture which is a bad fracture as far as the knee stiffness is concerned so this was the fracture which was sustained by the patient it was a lateral hofa's fracture with a large fragment and the surgeon tried to fix this fragment with a lateral parapatellar approach surgery was done approximately 15 to 20 days after the injury and a nice reduction was done and the fracture was fixed with three herbert screws long herbert screws along with a plate with two screws proximal and two screws distal fracture fixation unfortunately the patient landed up into severe arthrofibrosis this was the condition of the patient when he presented to us the range of motion was a mere 20 degrees and the knee was absolutely stiff the patellar movement side to side were absent we started with an arthroscopic procedure to treat this condition initially we were a little bit hesitant that this much of stiffness can be addressed with arthroscopy or not but eventually it worked out well here we can see there that there are very dense adhesions inside the knee joint whole of the intercondylar notch area was filled up with a very very dense adhesions which were very tough to release i technically use a 5 mm shaver blade in these cases to make the resection faster adhesions are released from center to periphery so slowly we will go from the intercondylar notch area to the lateral gutter which was the most affected pathological area in this particular patient being in the vicinity of the screws and the plate so we start the resection with the shaver but we may need to use arthroscopic scissors and arthroscopic punches to release the dense bands of adhesions which, which are there so here this is almost like a sheet of a dense adhesion at the level of the lateral femoral condyle and this is very nicely released with arthroscopic scissor punches slowly we will release the tissue in the medial and the lateral parapatellar gutters as well so here we can see that we are able to clear the intercondylar notch area much better as compared to what we were at the commencing of the surgical procedure shavers are then utilized to remove the tissue later on this lateral tissue is a very very thick tissue in this particular patient and then we will proceed to release the parapatellar gutters on the medial as well as the lateral side and what we do is when we release this lateral thick retinaculum which are on the medial and the lateral side so when we release the medial patellar retinaculum and the lateral patellar retinaculum the mobility of the patella increases and our mobility inside the knee joint also increases a lot so what we do here is we release the tight patella retinaculum and we try to release the patella gutter in the same area so when we release these tight bands the patella become more mobile and slowly we will go from distal to the proximal direction so what we do is we release the tissue on the distal aspect intercondylar notch first go proximally slowly and then we will go into the suprapatellar region so suprapatellar region is basically the suprapatellar pouch and normally there are very dense adhesion in this particular area and this particular area is usually hyperemic as well now I, you must understand that this most of the times this is very inflamed knees very highly vascular knees and there may be a lot of bleeding during this time so you will be you should be very cautious while releasing them with the shaver 
A few good tricks are you do it under pressure. I usually do it and do it under gravity uh, pressure, but you can use a little bit of pump as well. And the most important thing is use of the radio frequency ablation. So radio frequency ablation has the advantage of releasing the bands along with controlling the bleeding point. So here what we are doing is we are releasing the thickened bands and then we will be doing a good uh, coagulation with the electrocautery probe as well. So this is a release of the bands along with the coagulation. So there, this works very well in this particular scenario. I'll repeat the sequence intercondylar notch, medial patella retinaculum, lateral patella retinaculum, medial gutter, lateral gutter and then you will go to the suprapatellar pouch area. And the suprapatella pouch area, you might have to go up to 1 inches, 2 inches deep. And usually there are additions which are going on from the quadriceps to the shaft of the femur as well. Uh, a good trick in some cases, if you have some patients in which long femoral plates are applied, what you can do is you can use a finger dissection to release the bands between the femur and the quadriceps tendon. Now here we are exposing the plate which is present on the lateral femoral condyle which is used for the hopa fixation with two screws proximal and two screws distal. In this particular case we were fortunate enough to be able to expose whole of the plate by arthroscopy and we were able to remove all the screws in the plate with arthroscopic means. So what we've done here is we have released all the bands which are present there inside the uh, knee and we will be releasing all the dense additions that are there between the plate and the lateral tissue exposing the plate is like a little difficult and the radio frequency probe works very well in this particular scenario and what we do is then we can use a spinal needle to make accessory portals to use our screwdriver to remove the particular screws so here there were two screws proximal and two screws distal and we were able to remove all these screws in an arthroscopic way and then what we did is with, a, with an osteotome we can just ma made the plate free and remove the plate from the superior lateral portal. So this is a very elegant technique to do these particular cases. Uh, the Take home message in this particular case is that whenever you have a HOFA fracture, when you, whenever you fix them, you need to fix them very nicely, very strongly and you need to start with mobilization very soon because if you delay mobilization, there is a high chances of stiffness in this particular fracture pattern and God forbid if stiffness develops, you should address them early. So this was a late presentation. The patient present to, presented to us almost six months after the procedure and that makes the works very challenging because the the actual range of motion of the patient was only 0 to 20 degrees and was very stiff and it was actually very stiff to insert the scope itself inside so when we started this particular case it was very difficult to insert the scope in such a tight knee and one more thing that you all must remember in these particular cases you need to be very careful about scopes there are reports of the scopes being damaged because of the tight additions and you should avoid doing forceful manipulation of the scope you should be very gentle with the scope and whenever you are releasing this type of tissue always use radio frequency probe because a lot of bleeding may occur I usually always use a suction drain in this patient and usually uh, use the drain for two days because this uh, is a bleeding procedure and usually there is a collection normally we may have around 150 to 200 ml of correct collection of blood in these particular patients. This was the post-op movement 120 degree which was which we, we were able to achieve after the end of the procedure. And this is a small video clip which we have made after the surgical procedure and luckily we were able to achieve a 120 degree range in this particular patient. Thank, thanks a lot for your patient hearing.